So we've had the Bank of England inflation figures, 8.7%. It's going to be a bloodbath for mortgage interest rates. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys are not liking and subscribing enough. Come on, help me out here. Good morning, everybody. It's Pine from Niche. Right, um, we've had the government uh, inflation figures, and they're really bad, 8.7. Um, they were expecting it to come in around about the 7%. So this uh, increase, uh, or it just hasn't dropped, is going to have a major impact on how interest rates are going to go. And essentially, um, everybody was thinking there was going to be a hike of 0 0.25. There may even have to be a 0 0.5 percent interest rate hike which is really bad for the current market considering the US market inflation has dropped to four percent and in the eurozone is dropped to 6.1 percent so there's going to be some major issues going on and I think the swap rates and um, the, the 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 way lenders are funded is going to be affected which means um, rates will have to go up and not only interest rates but the lending rates will go up as well so really bad news uh, for the market for the economy um, for the housing market as well for those of the, for those of you who have been predicting uh, a major slump in uh, the economy and uh, later on to the housing market um, you seem to have been provide you know proved right um, I was in the I was in the camp of yeah there's going to be uh, some uh, drops uh, and I think there still will be but I'm still um, not sure whether we're going to get the big 20%, 30% drops. Although I have seen on Twitter a few of the advocates for the drop have seen, you know, that there's, there's, it depends how you look at it. Some people say, well, you know, there's a 13% drop already. Others are saying there's only 5 or 6% drop. But there's no doubt the trajectory is uh, a bad one uh, for the market, certainly on the short term, simply because, uh, you know, lending is going to be harder to get, affordability is going to be harder to get. Um, don't get me wrong, we've still got a lot of people that are committed to buy properties. Um, you know, most people tend to make money when other people are nervous about buying the property. So instead of having 30 people look at a property, you might have five now uh, and you might consider you know, those vendors might start considering uh, more serious offers uh, under the under the uh, price guide. But the issue that we've got is really the housing market slowing down. It will affect everything in the economy okay so for all of those people that are waiting and saying well i've been waiting for this question there's bloody fat home buyers they're getting all the support or these landlords are getting all the support the the fundamentals of the uh, uh, when an economy slow, slows down is it, it will eventually hit jobs it will eventually hit productivity and you know those things have to take take be taken into consideration it's not just about you know an isolated event of um the the um, the rates dropping. Um, it'll be very interesting because we've got a lot of people, I'm talking 150, 200,000 pound, uh, thousand people coming off their fixed rates every month. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, that all works out, especially for those people that are highly geared. Okay. Um, you know, those people that have got 50, 60, 70% equity in their properties, they're going to fare better. But if you are someone, for example, on a help to buy mortgage coming out, or you're on a high gearing um, buy to let mortgage, you're going to really struggle. I'll tell you something, I quoted a client uh, last Friday for a buy to let mortgage in central London. And um, the lending fee, the way it works, okay, the lending fee for the top product on the chart, okay, was £45,000. £45,000 lending fee. You know, that's the old £999 lender's admin fee. You know, those those sort of fees that used to be around. Certainly, they still are for, for residentials. But for the buy-to-let, to make the rental calculation work, because they needed the rental calculation to stack up, you need to go for a very low rate because you want the stress testing to work, right? The issue is the lender's price of funds is so expensive, they, they're sort of... Because of these rules that um, the regulators put in place, they can't sort of they can't make it work. So what they do is they bring the rate low, the initial rate, but then they add it to the fee to make everything work. So because of that, it's making uh, life really really hard for those people that have got large mortgages, not necessarily large gearings. Okay, you could have a 
two million pound house, uh, but you can have a four hundred thousand pound mortgage, five hundred thousand pound mortgage. And if the rentals don't work, you've still got the same problem. It doesn't matter how much equity you've got in the deal. So there's going to be some issues now. The, the people that are going to be um, under the cosh, I think, are going to be um, landlords, that portfolio landlords, the ones that have got seven, eight, nine, ten. All of those people that said, you know, I had no property two years ago. I've now got 12 properties. Right. The reality is going down the strategy that you have been, you've been gearing yourself up, buying, doing it up, refinancing, 75% loan to value, off to the next one, off to the next one, off to the next one. Now, I did warn about this a few years ago, and I've, I've actually made, consistently been warning about gearing yourself in such a strategy because it's all great when interest rates are 1% or 2%, but when it's 5 6 7%, and it's not just about you being able to afford that property. Maybe that property's got a great rental income. The issue is, is your background portfolio gets checked, okay? And if you're heavily geared on your background portfolio, the lenders will not lend to you. So there, there, there's gonna be some pain here for a lot of people that are heavily geared. Um, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's, you know, it's gotta go through the market. I think we're gonna have a couple of years of stagnations we're going to have a couple of years of uh, drops in the market so for all those people that are looking at high loan to value mortgages you've got to really watch out i did a video on this uh, i did a uh, video on 100 percent mortgage to say that i've done zero i still have done no cases on it right um but one thing you need to be aware of whether you're doing an 85 percent 90 percent 95 percent 100 percent mortgage all of those things um you are under uh, under pressure the property prices the prop the the price that you're getting make sure when you're negotiating you're actually negotiating for the next year for the next two years what the price is going to do in the next year it might be worth what it's worth right now but is it going to be worth what it's worth in six months time to a year and you've just got to uh, throw caution when you are doing your negotiations if you are still committed to buying there'll be a lot of people that are going to put their money to the sidelines put it into a fixed rate um, saving vehicle uh, and then sit it out and see how the market works out, um, which is which is fair enough. Um, there's a lot of refinancing going on. I think the markets that are going to be interesting to watch is the secure loans market, the debt consolidation market. Um, those markets are going to be interesting to watch, and and also having a look at the arrears on credit card debt for unsecured commitments. All of those car finances. You see, I've got clients that are very, you know, that on paper they make a lot of money, over 100, 150, 200,000 pounds. However, they've got a, a finance on a Range Rover. They're paying school fees, private school fees. They're doing all sorts of things. They've got thousands of credit card debt. They've just been living on their credit card. Those people, um, I would say, you know, you've got to be careful at the moment because everything's going up. And if should there be a shock to, like the, like the interest rate, but shock to your income then really things are going to get really hairy so um it, it's it's really bad news really really bad news for the economy um, the government have absolutely screwed and, and this is the government as well as the bank of england because i watched a um i watched an interview with mervyn king who was the um, governor of the bank of england throughout the 2007 2008 crash okay so he was the guy that was in charge of the last big major problem that we had and I watched this interview and it was about a year ago with Sky News um, and he said that he believed the Bank of England moved too late and this is before all of these rate hikes and all sorts of things right he said look we should have raised the rates much faster much sooner um, and because we haven't done so inflation is going to be problematic and that means that we have to now be a lot more aggressive with the rate cuts there are still things that the government can do, but I think they're going to probably let it run before the election. And with the election coming up, they'll probably do something. By that time, it might be too late for a lot of people. Now, I've also had a lot of comments, especially when I talk about landlords, especially when I do the buy-to-let mortgages and I talk about landlords. I have a lot of comments. And if you look at um, some of the videos made by uh, Honest Money, um, Moving with Charlie, those type of uh, channels out there that have been predicting and, and, and are very bullish on the housing market coming down. When you watch the, 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 the comments, we read the comments, um, a lot of people are like, good, bloody landlords, they're doing this. Oh, good, well, I'm, I'm hoping, dear God, I'm hoping for this market. A lot of people are saying a correction is overdue. Um, 
and I, th I don't I don't disagree in terms of the correction being overdue. I think, you know, property prices have got ridiculous. You know, there is no reason why a ex-council flat in central London is getting £4,000 rent, £3,500 rent, OK? So there are, there are exceptions to the rule. But fundamentally, I think it is bad for the economy. I think it's bad for um, the average people that are looking to buy. I don't think the government is going to do anything in terms of mortgage relief or any, any sort of things like that. Um, I think the lenders would probably be pushed to uh, do things like go on interest only, uh, make the rules around interest only a little bit simpler. They may even, um, they may even. So what's happening now is you've got sellers that are pulling their property on the market, believing it's worth what it was worth six months ago or a year ago. Well, guess what? It's not worth that, right? But the expectations are there, right? The expectations need to come down now because it's a buyer's market. It's certainly not a seller's market. It's a buyer's market, right? But I still believe sellers are trying to ask for too much. In the next six months, they're going to understand that it's definitely not a seller's market. It's a buyer's market. Um, and I've said this before. If you are buying a property, find out who you're buying from. Find out if it's already an investment property, okay? If it's a buy to let you're buying, so if it's got tenants in there, that means you've potentially got better room for negotiation, okay? Simply because the seller is probably not making money on that deal. That's why they're putting it on the market. It may have a short lease. They may have to cough up for another 20K on a lease. I saw a property not long ago, 22,000 pounds on a lease. Um, they put it up on the auction. The auctioner's fee was 4.75. On that property, it was about 10,500 pounds. Uh, you got some outstanding service charges. All of a sudden, this 30, 35K, the, the land was going to come up with it. Now, if they've got one or two, they may have it. But if they've got 15, they're going to struggle on those flats. So look at who you're buying off, what sort of state it is, what sort of condition it is. Because if you have to spend another 10K on it, um, all of a sudden, you've got the lease, You've got the fees, the, the auction, if it's in an auction. You've got the renovation cost on a two-bedroom flat. You're looking at 30, 40K. Um, and does that make sense, right? So, but then you can actually negotiate based on that. If you're willing to take that on, if you've got uh, appetite to do a bit of renovation, to do that work, because that two-bedroom flat may not work as an investment property, but it will certainly work as a first-time buyer flat, okay? And you could probably get a good deal on it right? And when it comes to the leases, there are lots of lenders that will give you, um, you know, a lot of lenders want 85 years left on the lease, but there are some lenders that don't want that. They would both do 30, 40, 50 years. So don't be put off by that because there are ways you can do so. There are conditions whereby the seller can actually give you the rights to do the lease extension. So, and you don't have to wait two years. So there are opportunities. There are lots of downsides to this market. There's going to be a lot of refinancing opportunities for us as brokers. Um, I'm seeing a lot more refinancing. People are aware, obviously it's in the BBC, it's on news. Everybody's aware of what where they are in their mortgages, right? And everybody's thinking, right, how do I time this? The best thing to do is seek professional advice. Try to get go with somebody that's got a whole other market offering. They can compare it because I'll be honest with you, I've got clients right now that are waiting for a buy to let mortgage quote off me today. I've said to them, I'm not going to give you a buy to let mortgage quote. They say, well, what do you mean? You're, you, you're a mortgage broker. What do you mean? I said, by the time I've taken the time, done the research, sent you the quote, it will change because lenders have been pulling their rates for the last couple of days. So it's a false quote, okay? Because I'm going to give you this quote and I know by the time interest rates change or delay in the next couple of days, that quote will be higher. So it's a bit of a false quote. So you've got to be honest with these clients and say, look, this is, this is the market. This is the situation. But what that means is I may quote you nationwide. We may end up with Santander two days from now on. I may quote you HSBC. We may end up with Halifax or, you know, on buy to let certainly is to do with rental calculations and it's, it's not straightforward. So, you know, work with someone that you trust, okay? Because what they quote you two weeks ago for an agreement in principle if they're doing their job right, that may change by the time you find the property and go to application, okay? Because, and if they're not lazy, then they should be researching the market again by the time you're ready. And if you have to swap lenders, you swap lenders because at the end of the day, that's best advice. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know about the market, guys. Let me know... Uh, what your thoughts are longer term uh, and I've done some videos interesting videos guys um, go and check out on my channel 
I, I did a recent video last week on what would you do if you had a hundred thousand pounds how would you invest that would you invest it in property would you put it in savings account would you go in the stock market crypto gold was a big one everybody was saying well no I'm gonna go and buy gold physical gold I'm gonna put it in a safety deposit box and so forth so go and watch that video it was a live it was like it was in the evening one night I did it um, it would be interesting to get your thoughts under that video leave the comments under that video because I will come back to you guys I'm trying to gauge where where everybody is right now what your risk appetites are and um, will you just sit it out and see how it all works out for the next year or two do you see this as an opportunity to say finally I'm gonna wait for the property prices to come down 10 15 whatever it's going to come down by and then I'm going to get in or are you just saying do you know what I've had enough I'm just going to rent and sit there the problem with renting is rents are going up rents have gone up massively okay so um, yeah let me know let me know your thoughts take care all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker as a mortgage is secured against your home or property it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.